It's time for a wellness revolution. Brought to you by Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. Honest discussion on maintaining health and wellness naturally to enjoy a better quality of life. He's the doctor fighting to let you keep your doctor. Now, Dr. Stephen Hotsi. Welcome to Dr. Hotsi's Wellness Revolution. I'm Stacey Banfield here with Dr. Stephen Hotsi, founder of the Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. And we are so delighted to have Dr. Sinatra back on the program today discussing simple tips that you can do to increase and improve your cardiovascular health. Dr. Hotsi. Thank you so much, Stacy, and thank you for joining us today on Dr. Hotsi's Wellness Revolution. We do believe that you and everybody should have a doctor and a staff of professionals to coach you on a path of health and wellness naturally. So as you mature, you've got energy, vitality, and enthusiasm for life. The reason I host this uh, podcast is because I want you to take charge of your health, and I want you to obtain and maintain health and wellness naturally. To do that, I like to bring some really high-level, prominent uh, physicians that are specializing not only in their specialty, but they specialize in natural and alternative approaches to help you obtain and maintain health and wellness without being on a pot full of pharmaceutical drugs. So I'm so pleased today to have my good friend, Dr. Stephen Sinatra, who's a cardiologist. Dr. Sinatra originally uh, grew up in Long Island, New York, and went off to medical school, New York Medical School in Albany, ultimately did a uh, a cardiology residency, and he's an, is an invasive cardiologist where he's done uh, all kinds of catheterizations of the heart. He's been, uh, he's been located both in Connecticut, where he had the New England Heart Center, and he was uh, at Manchester Memorial Hospital, chief of cardiology, director of medical education, and just a very prominent doctor nationwide, even before he began to approach and adopt more natural approaches to health, which just vaunted him to a completely new level where he is followed by literally thousands of physicians from all different specialties across the country following his recommendations not only for eating but for uh, heart medication and vitamin and mineral supplementation and uh, other, other methods that can help improve cardiovascular status. As you would know, folks, the leading cause of death in America is cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, and and those sort of uh, cardiovascular problems. It's the leading cause of death and has been for decades. And so if you want to be healthy and well, don't worry about, I mean, it's important to have a good healthy immune system. You got to, you know, fight off all these various infections and flu-like syndromes and COVID and all that. But that's not what's going to kill most Americans. What most Americans are going to end up dying from the, of a plurality will die from heart disease. It's above cancer. So that's why I'm excited to have Dr. Sinatra on the program today because I want him to give us Dr. Sinatra's tips for a healthy heart. So Dr. Sinatra, thank you for joining us again today. And I look forward to your educational, insightful comments about what individuals can do. Like myself, what can we do to maintain a good, healthy heart and cardiovascular status? Thank you for joining us. Uh, It's great to be here, Steve. Thanks for that nice introduction. Well, so tell me, we know it all starts with eating. Uh, You know, our, 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 the father of medicine, Hippocrates said that let food be your medicine and let medicine be your food. So in your experience, as a cardiologist, what is it? And I note that not only are you a board certified cardiologist, but you're also board certified in the American College of Nutrition as a certified nutritional specialist. Now, how many doctors, folks, do you know that are certified nutritionists? Most of them, I'm, I'm afraid most docs don't know the difference between a carbohydrate and a, and a, and a, uh, and, and, a, and a protein. Most of them, you know, they just say eat healthy and, you know, whatever that means to you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. But so tell us about, uh, the fact that you have this nutritional degree. Tell us first, what, a, what is, uh, what does eating have to do with your health as far as your heart health? Well, it has, uh, 
probably one of the most important things is what we put in our mouth is really, you know, how, you know, how we're going to really be. In other words, there's pro-inflammatory foods, there's anti-inflammatory foods. And, and it's really important because, you know, like we've mentioned before, or what I talked about in lectures, you know, inflammation is the root cause of heart disease. Now, it's kind of interesting, but my 50th medical school reunion is going to be next year, uh, next May. So I've been a doctor for almost 50 years. And I would, when I was lecturing last year, um, somebody asked me, what are your two greatest accomplishments about being a physician for almost 50 years? You know, because I knew I was in my early 70s. And it immediately came back to me, Steve. I said, you know, the, the two greatest accomplishments, my greatest accomplishments was the discovery of coenzyme Q10 and the essence of earthing or grounding on the heart. And basically, they're both connected. In other words, when we put our bare feet on the ground, or when we take in foods that contain CoQ10, like migratory salmon or sardines or, you know, uh, you know, organ meats or, you know, beef, for example, you know, contains a lot of CoQ10. But when we put those substances in our mouth and we ground at the same time, CoQ10 and earthing are very potent electron donors. In other words, th these are electron donors, and that's what the body needs. See, people take handfuls of vitamins and minerals. Why? The reason why is because they're antioxidants, they're electron donors. Now, you can take these electron donors in foods or in, or in antioxidants, and CoQ10 is the most powerful electron donor I, I know, and you can also get electrons from walking bare feet in the, at the beach or on grass or, you know, not on asphalt, that's man-made, but, you know, on tile, for example, or concrete or, or, or basically grass. You know, in other words, walking bare feet on Mother Earth you're going to absorb all these electrons. We call it the Schumann resonance. And that, that occurs from lightning strikes and solar sun flares and everything else. But basically, when it comes to medicine, this I used to call it God's simple cures, basically. You know, CoQ10, whether you're eating migratory salmon or sardines or foods fortified with CoQ10, like, like, like I mentioned before, like organ meats, et cetera, et cetera, or getting electrons from walking bare feet on the earth, these are simple maneuvers people can do. And basically, these are anti-aging maneuvers. And, 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 and these maneuvers can help reduce the relentless inflammation that we have in our bodies. So when it comes to CoQ10, I am all in. This is my number one go-to nutrient. I like to get it from the food supply. I also take it as a, a targeted nutritional supplement because this is the one that will prevent the inexorable ravages of aging that we all go through from day to day. Now, do you, in what form do you recommend the coenzyme Q10? We use ubiquin all here. I'm not sure. We're told that that's the most active and the best to use, but there may, it may not be that critical. What's your well, thought? It, you know, if, if you have a high quality ubiquinone, and I've done research on ubiquinones, and, and if you have a high quality ubiquinone, this is as good, if not even better, than a high quality ubiquinol. I will say this all ubiquinols are good. Uh, uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, uh, the ubiquinones, uh, especially if they have a high quality, uh, it's equally as good. I published a paper in the in one of the journals uh, because I, I did a study on ubiquinol versus ubiquinone. And basically, um, I had a long distance runner uh, who had a problem on ubiquinol. And I had a, a very famous Connecticut woman weightlifter who had a problem on ubiquinol as well. What do you mean and they I, had a problem? What kind of problem? that they had dreadful fatigue. In other words, I did a double blind crossover trial and basically certain people on ubiquinol, for some reason, they don't do well. Uh, you don't hear this in the advertising, but uh, you know, a person like myself who does clinical research, I've seen it firsthand. So basically when you're buying ubiquinol, you are buying a good product. There's no doubt about it. All ubiquinols are good, but ubiquinols, you know, much more expensive than even the highest quality ubiquinones. And the ubiquinones that, that, that we use at Healthy Directions, and I've tested them, I've done blood levels on them, uh, I feel strongly about because, look, as a heart specialist, Steve, I recommend two, three, four, 500 milligrams of CoQ10 a day. Right. I've had patients go literally broke, you know, financially taking CoQ10. So when it comes to taking a CoQ10, I prefer the most... Um, advanced form of CoQ10, but the least expensive at the same time. Because as physicians, we have to be privy to pay the costs. And you know as well as I do, I mean, pharmaceuticals sometimes can be, be priced through the roof. Outrageous. The same thing is true of nutraceuticals. So basically, 
Um, we use a high quality ubiquinone that's a lot less expensive, and it, and I feel it's uh, it's it's really superior. Now you use ubiquinone over ubiquinol, or vice versa. What, explain that again. Well, remember this: ubiquinone and ubiquinol are inter, inter, they are a change in the body right. uh, immediately. In other words, ubiquinol is a reduced form of CoQ10, and ubiquinone is the oxidized form. But they both are interchanged back and forth. Now, does ubiquinol have an advantage in people? Yes, it does. And I want you to get this. In inborn errors of metabolism, these rare congenital disorders like McCardell syndrome, free drag cytoxia, in other words, these, these, these situations where we have defective mitochondria, I believe that ubiquinol may have an advantage. And I want to use the word may. So when I see children with inborn errors of metabolism as a, as a heart specialist or free drag cytoxia, uh, I will choose ubiquinol over ubiquinone. Uh, because it may take a little more energy to convert it in the body, and these children are starving for energy. So in that population, with these congenital, horrific, inborn errors of metabolism, I will choose a, a ubiquinol, a, even over you know Tishkan's high-quality ubiquinone, which I use. But that's like less than one-tenth of a percent of the population. In the 99-plus percentage of the population, I use a high-quality ubiquinone. I got you. And so uh, what other what other supplements, vitamins, or minerals are in your regimen or arm, arm? What would be the top four or five besides well, ubiquinol? Yeah, basically, um, if you want to talk about heart failure, now, when you and I were both in medical school, and we're probably around the same age, right? Uh, you probably heard what I heard. The five-year survival of heart failure was worse than cancer. And that's what our professors taught us, you know, back in the in the early 70s in right. medical school. Um, when I started using CoQ10 in the early 80s, um, that completely reversed. Steve, it was like a miracle. When, when I was seeing people waiting for heart transplants, whether it were adults or even children, I've treated dozens and dozens of children who are waiting for heart transplants. I mean, I had patients crying in my office with their nine-year-old suffering from heart failure because they couldn't match his heart. And it was a race against time. <clears throat> and I would treat these children with CoQ10. I, I, I did have uh, the, the luxury of having a, a carnitine at the same time and magnesium. I didn't learn about D-ribose until about 2000, and, uh, actually it was back in 2004, when I learned it from another board certified cardiologist, Dr. Jim Roberts, Roberts, who was a co-author of Reverse Heart Disease Now. When I was sitting in the audience, actually it was at the A4M, um, Steve, I, have, I had about 10 to 15 percent failures with CoQ10, magnesium, and carnitine. But when I learned about D-ribose, that was the that was the sort of the secret sauce that blended everything together. So I was really indebted to Dr. Jim Roberts, another board-certified cardiologist. He brought it to my attention almost 20 years ago, and since I started using D-ribose in combination with CoQ10, magnesium, and L-carnitine, I call that the awesome foursome. And what that does, Steve, and, and, and uh, our, our listeners should be <clears throat> privy to this, what it does, it drives energy uh, into the right direction. In other words, it drives the production of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Now listen, um, it's all about energy when it comes to the heart. Even prehistoric man realized that you know, life depended upon a pulsating heart. So you wanna get the heart to pulsate. You want a good ejection fraction. You want a strong heartbeat. And what the awesome foursome does, it drives the ATP, adenosine triphosphate, in, in, into the direction. And basically, somebody you know, smarter than me is going to discover this. But I have a feeling that when you drive ATP, you're communicating with maybe the exosomes in your body or the chemical messages in your body that's turning on your intrinsic stem cells. Remember. We all have intrinsic stem cells. They're in our fat right. cells, they're in our liver. And with the stem cell revolution, which occurred over the last 20 years, that these, these chemical messages that are induced by the awesome foursome are communicating and we're developing new heart cells. Steve, this is amazing, but I have patients living with heart failure with severely uh, damaged hearts from heart attack, 10, 20, 30, and 40 years. Because, I, because remember, you can regenerate the heart. You know, 
Doctors know this. Look, we regenerate our blood cells every 120 days, right? We make new blood cells right. from the bone marrow. We regenerate our epithelium in our nose and our mouth every three days. We re regenerate our intestinal epithelium, you know, maybe once a week in our GI tract. Well, guess what? We also regenerate our heart cells, believe it or not. In other words, we can get cardiac regeneration. And when I read this article in the Science Journal about 10 or 15 years ago, oh my God, Steve, I had this incredible nirvana where I realized why my people were living and why my congenital hearts who were dying, uh, and I put them on the awesome force, and now I realized why they were living because I have a feeling they were, could be the ATP and the exosomes in the body are communicating with our intrinsic stem cells to form new, what we call myocytes, or new heart cells. Just like we form new red blood cells, we can form new heart cells. So if we have a, 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 a degenerative heart or a heart compromised by a heart attack and we lose half our heart from, from damage to the heart, we can regenerate that heart with the awesome foursome. And that to me is the greatest discovery in my lifetime. And that's the legacy I hopefully I can leave when I pass from this planet. Well, this is this is really a key. These four particular uh, nutraceutical products, coenzyme Q10 in the form of ubiquinol, L-carnitine, and, and, and minimally a healthy person in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that's healthy. What would you put them on? Uh, on uh, ubiquinol, 200 milligrams a day, 300, 400 well, milligrams? Well, actually, again, I use ubiquinone because, again, it's less okay. expensive and, and right. it's a very, very high quality. Uh, so I, I just want to set the record straight. Uh, for a healthy person, a healthy person over the age of 40, uh, I like about 100 milligrams of a good quality ubiquinol or uh, ubiquinone. Any compromised individual, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, angina, valvular disease, heart failure, I like to double it up to, or at least go to 150 to 200 milligrams. And then in anybody waiting for a heart transplant or severe heart failure, if 200 milligrams doesn't uh, afford these people a good quality of life, I'll even go higher to three or 400 milligrams. Re remember Steve, in the old days, we would me measure blood levels like the joxin in people's blood, or we'd, we'd measure uh, ACE inhibitors in the right. blood, and we'd measure you know different drugs in the blood. Well, you can measure also CoQ10 in the bloodstream. And uh, I presented papers at the CoQ10 Symposium in Ancona, Italy, uh, over 10 years ago, where I showed these patients who had refractory heart failure who did not really recover until they bumped their blood levels of CoQ10 up to seven times normal. So in other words, a normal blood level of CoQ10 can be 0.6 or 0 0.7, but sometimes we got to go to 3.5 and above to really see a therapeutic difference. And in my sickest patients, uh, I would have to drive the blood level that high. So just like we did it with the joxin and ACE inhibitors, and, and you know we measure potassium in the blood and magnesium in the blood, the same thing is true of coenzyme Q10. So uh, if I had a failure, the first thing I would do, if, in other words, if a patient didn't respond clinically, I would take their, test their blood level. If their blood level was low, I would certainly get their blood level up to a respectable level. Uh, and, and mostly, you know, 100% of the time, I saw a therapeutic effect. Now, L-carnitine is another nutraceutical product you use. Now, L-carnitine is a, an amino acid that helps convert fat intracellularly into energy. The fat gets, con it brings the fat into the, into the right. uh, mitochondria. So what, what sort of dose do you use on that? Well, I used to use large doses until I realized that some people with thyroid disease and large and high dose carnitine, there was a connection. Uh, so I started to reduce uh, the doses. Then this whole thing came out about this TMAO hypothesis, which is, I think, is a hypothesis. Nobody has really proved it. You know, it's only an, it's sort of an interest, interesting uh, uh, aspect of looking at heart disease from the, uh, the TMAO metabolites in the gut. Uh, which come from fish, <laughs> unfortunately. You know, we used to think that fish was, you know, not only brain food, but it's good for the heart. Right. But basically, um, you know, some of these uh, TMAO derivatives were thrown under the bus, and carnitine was one of them. I mean, the Cleveland Clinic has uh, produced data showing that, you know, in, in the meta-analysis, that carnitine is superior in patients with uh, cardiomyopathy and angina because it does so much good, so many good things for the heart. Does it raise TMAO? Yes, it does, because it's an animal that comes from animal flesh. 
But when it comes to carnitine, what I've realized over my growth and development as a cardiologist is that less is more. So in other words, when I used to use two and three grams, now I'm down to 500 milligrams to up to a gram, gram and a half, because I realize even small doses of carnitine, um, we, we, we get a lot of bang for our buck. And remember this, Steve, you mentioned it. Carnitine is like a shuttle. It shuttles in um, not only free fats to be burned. See, people don't realize this, but fat is the energy for the heart. Remember, glucose is the energy for the brain. Sugar is the energy for the brain, right? But fat is the energy for the heart. And basically, um, uh, that's how we develop ATP, you know, basically for more from fat molecules than opposed to sugar. Right. So um, when we use carnitine, we're not only shuttling in these free fatty acids like a ferry boat, but we're shuttling, shuttling out the toxic byproducts of the metabolized fat. So carnitine acts like a shuttle. And that's why we call it the carnitine shuttle and even small doses. Uh, I've even had some of my patients improve on 100 milligrams a day. Uh, so, you know, you can go to 100 milligrams up to 250, up to 500, you know, you know, even more. But when it but it works wonderfully with CoQ10, D-ribose and magnesium. And remember, D-ribose is the center of the ATP molecule and magnesium basically is the glue that holds everything together because magnesium is involved in hundreds of enzymatic reactions in the body. So that's why I call it the awesome foursome because I believe that, you know, this magical, you know, four nutrients, they'll drive ATP. The ATP communicates with some perhaps exosomes or other chemical cytokines in the body that turn on our intrinsic stem cells to form new cells. So that's the, sort of the Sinatra hypothesis in cardiac regeneration. Right. So magnesium, what form do you use? Citrate? I use glycinate, glycinate citrate, orotate. Orotate's my favorite varietal. I was at a CoQ10 conference, again, about a decade ago, when these Australian cardiovascular surgeons were using the orotate. Um, Steve, do you remember this years ago when um, uh, some of our surgeons uh, used to uh, try to add substances like potassium to to the uh, heart lung machine to drive ATP. Okay. Well, one of those was magnesium orotate. Magnesium orotate was used by these thoracic surgeons to get people off heart lung bypass because magnesium orotate drives ATP even better than magnesium citrate or glycinate. So that's why I started, or taurinate for that matter, that's why I started to use magnesium orotate uh, in my broad spectrum magnesium formula that Healthy Directions produces. For How me. many milligrams of magnesium do you like to give routinely? On well, day? routinely, I like about four to 600. Uh, I tell patients that, um, you know, magnesium, some people can, can, can get a bowel cleansing effect like milk or magnesia. Remember, milk or magnesia that our mothers used to right. give us, Steve, was mostly magnesium oxide, mm -hmm. which stimulates the bowel. Now, there's no magnesium oxide in my broad spectrum magnesium, but basically magnesium is magnesium. And if you take a lot of it, you, you can get a stimulatory effect to the large bowel and get a bowel cleansing effect as well. Right. If you take that with large amounts of vitamin C, you'll have clean bowels the rest of your life. I promise exactly. you. Exactly. That. <laughs> that's not a bad thing, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> and finally, on your D-ribose, how do you dose that? Yeah, I generally tell people to take like a level teaspoon, which is five grams, either two to three times a day. Uh, if you have like mitral valve prolapse or hypertension or angina, maybe one teaspoon a day. Um, if you have a little bit of heart failure, maybe mild heart failure, two teaspoons a day. For any moderate to severe heart failure, three teaspoons a day. Or if you're compromised, you know, with a, with a poor quality of life. Because remember, D-ribose will, will support that production of ATP, and that's what you really need. And I really like D-ribose. It has changed... Uh, Oh my, oh my God, even in my congenital patients, like I mentioned before, it, it has made a serious impact in their lives. Steve, I have had so many congenital kids that refused heart transplants as adults, even later in their teenagehood, because they had such a good quality of life on the awesome foursome that, and I'm talking about far advanced heart diseases. I'm talking about singlet outlet left ventricles, tetralogy of Fallot. I'm talking about the worst cases of congenital heart disease and, and I believe, again, the, the awesome foursome is redirecting our stem cells and, and creating new, you know, cardiomyocytes and de developing actually a new, a new heart, so to speak. That is wonderful information uh, to receive from you. And I hope that this is really an encouragement to each one of you out there. Now, this 
fearsome foursome of ubiquinone, coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, magnesium, and D-ribose isn't just for people with heart disease or people with congestive heart failure. It's for you. You want to be on a regimen, and you may not need to be on as much, obviously, as somebody who has severe cardiovascular disease or heart failure. But if you take this on a regular basis, your heart will make it will do the same thing it's doing for these people. It will help you build new heart cells. It will keep your heart functioning healthy. Now, remember, the most important thing you can do, two important things you want to maintain to have good health, you want to have good energy level production in your heart. You've read Tenet stuff, I'm sure, on, uh, on voltage. The key thing is most people, as you age, as we age, our voltage production goes down. Voltage is a measurement of electricity. Every cell in your body has a power plant. It's called the mitochondria, if you think back in your biology in high school. It's a power plant. That power plant produces electrical current. That electrical current is really formed in the molecule ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which you can remember from biology if you took it in college. So that adenosine triphosphate contains the electrons, the electricity that drives all the biochemical processes in your cells. And if your cells are healthy, then your organs are healthy. And if your organs are healthy, you're healthy. So you want to have good energy production. You, Instead of being a low-voltage individual, you want to be a high-voltage individual. You want to be the life of the party. And many people, and this is the aging process, as you age, you may change your eating habits, your hormone levels go down, your thyroid hormones, your sex hormones, adrenal hormones, and you don't get the vitamins and minerals you need because the food you're eating is basically just crap. It's just it's the American diet, and you're eating that, and you're unhealthy. You may, on top of that, have allergies, uh, which we haven't discussed, but allergies adversely affect your immune system and drain your immune system and make you unhealthy. And when your body is unhealthy, you end up going to the doctor, and the doctor wants to treat your symptoms with a bunch of a bunch of drugs and medication rather than nutritional support with foods and with vitamins and minerals. And so we put you on a bunch of drugs, which are toxic and you get sicker quicker, as Sherry Rogers has said, and you go downhill. And that's why we see so many people. And I know Dr. Sinatra has seen her in his practice. People come in with all kinds of medications from doctors when they have these various problems and they've got them on antidepressants, antipsychotic, antipsychotic drugs. They've got them on anti-anxiety drugs, sleep medications, a host of pot full of medications which do not address the underlying problem. The key is you've got to have a good, healthy heart. Your heart enables your body to produce energy. Why? Because it circulates the blood. Why is the blood important? Because it contains oxygen. You've got to have oxygen getting into your power plants and your mitochondria to produce energy. You've got to produce energy to be healthy. So the whole goal is to, is to produce good energy, have a healthy heart. That's by cutting out all the junk food that you're eating that's causing inflammation and adding to your eating program good, healthy oils, good, healthy fats, and good, healthy green vegetables. Fresher the better. You can eat them fresh. I like eat them in the form of salad. If you're going to cook them, just blanch them and, and uh, eat, eat some good, healthy meat. Uh, grain-fed beef is good. You know, get yourself some... Get yourself some uh, wild salmon. Eat, don't eat this fish that's grown on a farm. That's not good for you. Eat, eat wild fish, and that'll be good for you. And, and uh, eat wild. Uh, <laughs> the chicken that you, 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 grow, you range out on a farm, you can get those, get those eggs. And eat that way, and you're going to be healthy. Eat less, folks. Don't eat more. Eat less. You don't have to eat three square meals a day. That's just bull. My dog, who is five and a half years old, my wife feeds that dog who's a, uh, who's a retriever, silver retriever, uh, Labrador, feeds it once a day. All, she, all that dog eats is dried bison beef once a day. He's thin, he's trim, he's muscular, he's got energy, he does all, he's active. You, you know, so I, I, I watched how she fed him years ago and I said, you know what, there's no reason I need to eat two or three meals a day. One meal a day is fine. And that's, uh, that is called intermittent fasting. And we haven't talked about that, doctor, but that's what we promote here, intermittent fasting. Eat once a day. In fact, my wife and I, over the last week, normally go starting on Sunday night. We have a light meal Sunday night. We don't eat again until Tuesday night. So it's been two days. Am I hungry? Not a bit. I hadn't been hungry in two days. I have bulletproof coffee in the morning, and that's pretty much it. I'm off and running. 
So you've got to train yourself to eat less and eat when you do eat, eat healthy. And then, then take the, the awesome foursome of Dr. Sinatra. Take your ubiquinol, ubiquinol coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, magnesium, and D-ripose. These are absolutely critical for cardiovascular function. On top of that, I do want to recommend high doses of vitamin C. I'm a, I'm a Linus Paulin fan, and I've followed him for years, and uh, his associate, Dr. Uh, Mathis, um, indicated and, and showed through their studies the, the importance of vitamin C. We don't make vitamin C. All the mammals in God's creation make vitamin C, except for humans, monkeys, and guinea pigs, and they make on the average 1,000 milligrams per 25 pounds of body weight. I recommend to all our guests 1,000 milligrams per 25 pounds of body weight. If you weigh 150 pounds, take 6,000 milligrams a day. I happen to be a Linus Pauling fan. I take a, on the order of 20,000 milligrams a day, and I've taken 10,000 milligrams a day since I first heard Linus Pauling speak in 1990. And uh, I've got, when you look at my coronary arteries on a heart scan, there's no atherosclerosis at all. And at 71 years of age, that's rare. So uh, vitamin C is very important. And then I also recommend for your immune system high doses of vitamin D3. And this is important because this is what really stimulates a good immune system health. And it's been shown in people with viral diseases, particularly with COVID, people that had high levels of vitamin D either don't contract the disease or when they contract it have mild cases. People with low, very low levels of vitamin D tend to have severe problems in severe cases. So vitamin D3 can help protect you against the flu and, it can, and help protect you against uh, respiratory illness like COVID. And I recommend on most of our guests, minimally 10,000 international units a day. I take 30,000 a day, and I can barely get my level up where I want it around 80 to 90 and won't hardly get there. So you have to measure, get your doctor to measure your vitamin D levels, but most conventional doctors will say, well, take 2,000 a day. That'll never get you where you need to be. Almost every guest we see here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center has low levels of vitamin D. They're always down in the low range, 30 to 40. You, and, and the range is 30 to 100, and I still think that range is way low to begin with, but you want to get it above 70 uh, nanograms per ml. That's what you want to get. And so get it measured at your doctor's office, and that will help prevent, uh, that can help prevent you getting viral illnesses, particularly in all of us. You know, you say, why do you need vitamin D? Because all of us are sitting inside. Most of us work inside. We're not working outside. We rarely go outside and get enough sun. You know, when do you do that? And in the winter, it's worse, especially up north. Big problems with low vitamin D up north. So those are some things that you can do and uh, uh, to keep yourself healthy. On top of that, get a good night's sleep. Uh, do some form of exercise. And, and you don't have to run a marathon. Get out and walk. And as Dr. Sinatra uh, reminds us, ground. I mean, take your shoes off. Take your socks off. Get out and walk in the dirt. Walk on the beach. And that's a way your body has a way, uh, it has an antioxidant effect on your body. And it will help neutralize it. We're made up of electrical currents, and we want to neutralize it. We, want to ha- we don't want to have any abnormal molecules racing around that are, are, that are oxidants and have an oxidative effect on our bodies like, uh, like oxygen would on, uh, like oxygen does on the top of, of steel when it rusts that's oxidation well we don't want that we don't want our bodies to oxidize we want that that's why we put medications in it like coenzyme q10 and like vitamin c and others and why we ground so we have the antioxidant effect and those are some very important points that are takeaways from this conversation with dr stephen sinatra so dr sinatra i appreciate you're being here with us and just re-emphasizing the fundamentals of good health. And notice, we didn't tell you to take any drugs, folks. We didn't, we didn't recommend one pharmaceutical agent at all. So this is why I love having Dr. Sinatra on, because he's here t- telling you natural things that you can do to be healthy. And I would highly recommend that you follow his recommendations. If you do that, you're going to have good heart health. And I would recommend... Of all the books you have, I think reversing heart disease is really critical. Even if you don't have heart disease, if you see how you can reverse it, then you can see how you can prevent it. Heart disease is preventable, folks. You don't have to die of heart disease. You don't. You can prevent it, and you can prevent it through proper habits that you develop, habits in what you eat, 
in what you exercise, in vitamin and mineral supplementation, all these are, and, it's, and we didn't even get into the, to the uh, uh, psychological effects that you can have on your heart. Uh, the positive benefits can have a meditation, a prayer, reading the scriptures, uh, being at peace with God and with man. All those things are very important for heart health, and that's another topic for another, uh, another day. So, Dr. Sinatra, thank you again for joining us. You were tremendous, and I appreciate you. You got me fired up. <laughs> well, that's great, Steve. That was a great conclusion. And uh, yeah, maybe we can do a program on uh, on meditation, prayer, and grounding. And by the way, my next book is Get Grounded, Get Well. That'll be coming out probably in around six months to a year. And uh, uh, we should really talk about earthing and grounding more because there's more and more exciting stuff coming out on that. Right. Uh, last time you were uh, last time last time you were here. Uh, we talked about that, and I had read about it. So I saw some doctor on uh, on YouTube somewhere talking about it, and then I saw that you were involved in grounding, and so I was very, very interested in that. We need to do a program on that. So, again, thank you for joining us today. Thank each one of you for joining us today, and we wish you every success in life, and we hope you have a life that's full of health and happiness. God bless each one of you. Thank you for joining us. Information provided on this radio program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution radio program advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this radio program is at the listener's discretion.